So they smite the enemies, and they collect the loot, and they return to Jerusalem in great victory. They trusted in the Lord, and the Lord delivered his people. King Asa followed heartily after God, and God took care of him. We see in chapter 15, <clears throat> And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded, and he went to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you, while ye be with him. If ye seek him, he will be found of you, but if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And uh, he, rem he reminds them that uh, the ways of their actions will have consequences. If they will continue to seek the Lord, things will continue to be good. If they forsake the Lord, things are going to turn right around and be not good for them. Well, we see in uh, verse 3, he reminds them of the history of the nation of Israel, about how things had gone bad for a while for Israel because they forsook the Lord. For an example of this, read the whole book of Judges and see Israel's constant defeats. You see occasional spikes of victory, but constant defeat at the hand of their enemies because they constantly forsake the Lord God as soon as the judge who delivered them was dead. Now for a long season, Israel had been without a true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. But with they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexation was upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, for the God did vex them with all adversity. And the prophet encourages Asa and the people of Judah, Be strong therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. We say King Asa, he starts out well, he prepares his nation well. In time of war, he looks to God. An overwhelming armies come against him and he looks to God for deliverance. God delivers him. The prophet comes and encourages him to continue in this way. And it says in verse 8, When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away all the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin. <clears throat> And out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. So it seems in the start of the chapter, at the start of his reign, he'd made somewhat of a sweep of the idols. Now he's making a very thorough uh, removal of all the idols, of all the false gods throughout all of his land, realm. Every city he's taken, even from Mount Ephraim, he's fetching all the idols out of it and destroying them. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and other strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon. For they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month and the fifteenth year of the month of Asa. And they offered unto the Lord that same time of the spoil which they had brought, seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting, with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. So we see all Israel comes together, or at least all Judah and many people from the northern tribes. They come together, there's a great revival. They throw out all the false gods out of the land and they seek their hearts wholeheartedly on the true God. And uh, we see that uh, God is found of them. When we as believers uh, throw the idols out of our hearts, when we draw an eye to God, God will always draw an eye to us. And there's great peace on the land. Notice the dedication, the loyalty of King Asa. And also concerning Maka, the mother of Asa, the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burnt it by the brook Kedron. <coughs> it seems that uh, the king's mother, actually technically his grandmother, but uh, she was what you would call the queen mother of the time. The uh, uh, Back in those days, it was uh, almost a little bit like a uh, first lady sort of position. The king's mother, or perhaps grandmother, if she was still alive, would, uh, occupied an interesting position in those lands. And Maka was, interestingly, uh, she was a daughter of Absalom. She was a wife of Rehoboam, and uh, she was King Asa's grandmother. And uh, she was a worshiper of false idols, apparently. 
And he, uh, King Asa was so dedicated to the Lord, he even took dear grandma out of her position of uh, royalty, if you will, and destroyed her idol. And it's, it's some pretty serious dedication for a person to have to turn against their family when their family is turned against God. But uh, we find in the New Testament, the Bible reminds us that if any man hate not father or mother or wife or brother or sister, he cannot be my disciple, Jesus said. And sometimes a believer is going to have to turn aside from any distraction, even if it's family, to fall or closer under Christ. And now uh, we see in verse 17, But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated. And he himself had dedicated silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war under the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. So we see here, from the fifteenth year under the five and thirtieth year, things are peaceful. Things are going great. We see everything's going well. About 20 years later, we get a look at what's going on in chapter six, uh, 16. 20 years down the road, in the 6th and 30th year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. So basically, he uh, approaches his armies towards Jerusalem, and he builds like a uh, kind of a fortress, if you will. It seems to cut off the trade routes of Judah with um, places more northern and western, and uh, basically to try to hem them in, to destroy them economically. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, What's going on? There is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go, break thy lead with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. So the king of Israel, Basha, the king of the ten northern tribes, basically makes an act of war against him and try to siege him, to try to hem his country in. <clears throat> Basha, it seems, is allied with Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. And so, King Asa, king of Judah, gets together all the money from the house of the Lord and from the treasury of the Lord's house and sends it up to Ben-Hadad, saying, Hey, instead of being friends with Basha, be my friend. It's kind of interesting on several levels. If you think if you're buying away the loyalty of someone and they're loyal only to the highest bidder, what if the other guy bids even higher than you did and bids you back? You've lost your money and you're in trouble. Well, anyway... It says, And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto King Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the city of Israel. And they smote Ijon and Dan and uh, abel Maim and all the store cities of Naphtali. And it came to pass, when Ben-Hadad heard it, that he left off building of Ramah and let his work cease. So Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, says, Sure, this sounds great. And he goes and he attacks Israel. The people who was his loyal buddies just a little bit ago, he attacks them. And it seems he raids a bunch of cities up in uh, northern Israel. And uh, it says in verse 5, when Basha, he's the king of Israel, he's the one who's trying to put the chokehold on the king of Judah, when he hears about this, he leaves off the building of Ramah, that's the fortress he was building, and uh, let his work cease. So it seems like King Asa's plan has worked. Then King Asa took all Judah, and they carried away all the stones of Ramah, and the timber thereof, wherewith Basha was building, and he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. I think, I think that's a lot of fun. He takes the enemy's uh, rocks and, and their, their timber and everything they were building with, and he builds his own place with it. I like the irony of it. Well, and in the same time, Anani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. God had a plan for the king of Syria. Seems like God's plan for the king of Syria was going to be that the king of Syria was going to come attack King Asa, and probably with him Basha. And God's plan was going to be that they would be defeated, just like Zerah the Ethiopian was defeated. God said, because you didn't trust in me, because you relied in the king of Syria, the one I was going to deliver into your hand, he's not going to be delivered into your hand now. I find that interesting. When King Asa stopped trusting in God, 
He ended up trusting in the